Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Jerome Bee Farm and Homestead. Uh, this is going to be a short video, just an update of what we got going on around here. We got our raised bed gardens uh, pretty much finished, so I'm going to show you that. And I'm going to show you the chicken coop and some other things we got going on around here. Maybe a quick tour of the beehives and show you what's going on with the beehives. So let's get started. Okay, first thing you may have noticed, I'll stand in front of this... Uh, big round bale of hay this is a uh, wheat straw we got uh, from one of my wife's cousins out in western Oklahoma so we've been using that around here a little bit uh, doing some garden beds and things like that so let's uh, circle around and I'll show you what's going on so our uh, part-time compost pit that we used all winter is right here and uh, all these things come up volunteer. We've got uh, some uh, watermelons, tomato, pumpkin, cantaloupe, and potatoes. Looks like something else is coming up right there. So uh, we did not plant a thing in here. Everything, every one of these came up volunteer. And we put cardboard down and straw around this. Uh, this last weekend so when the watermelons start branching out they won't be on the ground so that's it for that so first off here's a shot of our orchard most of our fruit trees have done okay we've been keeping them watered really well and we've dug out around most of them expanded the uh, area that holds water we also put cardboard around that and wood chips on top of that so we did lose one down there on the very end I'm not sure what type it is but it's all coming up from down below and then there's one over behind the chicken coop that uh, is the same way it's coming up from roots over at the compost pit Here's our big compost pit. So uh, we've been dumping stuff in here. Those are uh, biodegradable uh, plastic or whatever that is. So that stuff will uh, decay away. So we've been dumping green stuff in here. So we made kind of a trough there. And the rest of it's over here. I know it looks like it's mostly dirt, but uh, that is mostly uh, leaf and uh, grass clippings. There's probably 25 or 30 bags of grass clippings. I turned this uh, this weekend, and uh, it has pretty good aroma to it. So the grass clippings are down in there decaying. So it's funny how much it looks like it's just a bunch of muddy dirt, but it's really not, and it's a lot richer. If you look at the color compared to that dirt right there, that's just red, basic, sandy junk. So that's what came out of this pit area. And uh, it's getting darker here. It's got a long ways to go though. Needs a lot more organic material in it probably. So uh, we've got to keep the dog out of here. She comes over here and rummages through it. <laughs> okay, so raised bed garden, ta-da! There it is. So we got it all fenced in. And you see the, the uh, tomato trellis thing over there where we hang this string. Got a couple little beds on the outside, uh, outside of the fenced in area. So go ahead and go inside here. So inside, here's the first piece that I had built and uh, finished up with these three foot beds that circle the entire garden all the way around the back. And uh, Here's our green beans. They're not doing good at all. But uh, talked to CB over at CB's greenhouse and garden and he gave us some pointers. We uh, put some nitrate on there and also we started watering it a lot more. I think this uh, dirt, it's still really fluffy because it's new and it drains really well. So the moisture doesn't stay where the seeds are very long or the, the new roots. Also we put these boards across it because this ground isn't perfectly level, 
and what we found was all the water would just migrate down this direction here so uh, we put those in to help with the watering and that's helped a little bit too got some peppers here here's our tomatoes they're not the healthiest looking tomatoes we put some nitrate down on them as well and uh, got a lot of leaf curl going most of the way up the plant so I'm not sure why they're not so healthy but uh, we got some good tomatoes on this one down here and down there's one turning red so we are going to get a few tomatoes but they're just not real healthy plants not sure why that uh, that's what's going on with them so uh, here's the back row We've got some chives going on there we transplanted our comfrey out of the cold frame area and over here looks like it's wilting a little bit but it'll bounce back so it's probably just needs some water but it was over there in the cold frame area there's chicken coop anyway let's walk around the rest of the way around the garden Got some corn on this row. There's some chives. And uh, this is Ashton's truck where he was helping out. And another row of something there. I'm not sure what else he's got planted. Then there's some cucumbers over there on some mounds. But anyway, the garden looks great, but the plants, not so much. I think we got started a little late because it took so long to get the garden done. But uh, anyway, there's the chickens. They're doing good so let's go over there and check them out something else i didn't point out is uh she planted i'm not sure what it is some kind of a vine that will climb up this fence and go up there into that pergola and there's one on each side and there's zinnias all planted along the front of this zinnias over here and a comfrey plant here's two of our uh, comfrey plants that uh, was kind of late coming up so we left them in where we got them started she's got her some lilies in here so let's check out what the chickens got going on so yesterday i walked out through the uh field and picked a bunch of uh, Johnson grass seed uh, where the Johnson grass was seeding out and threw it in here and they really liked that and we also threw a bunch of mulberries in here they all had purple beaks from eating mulberries <laughs> so all the chickens are doing good we haven't lost any yet we still have 10 buff Orphingtons the uh, off-grid mobile chicken goop coop is performing well the uh, automatic door opens at 10 a.m. in the morning and closes about 9.15 in the evening. So the chickens get to roam in this area here behind the fence. All the way out to there. So far we haven't had any hawk attacks or anything like that. The Premier One fence has been uh, working real well. Haven't had any issues with it. In fact, it keeps the... Uh, our dog got into it and learned to stay away from it. And the neighbor dog, he got shocked one time and uh, he knows to stay out of it too so the dogs are staying out and uh we haven't had any issues with any wildlife trying to get into it either no predators so far so let's head on down to the beehives and uh i'll give you a quick uh update on what's going on down there down there one other thing the beehive the mobile beehive trailer project is uh on hold it's not probably not going to happen this year but uh just got it moved aside so i was going to put six hives on that but all the time went to finishing the chicken coop and uh finishing up the garden
So as you can see, we've got tons of wildflowers planted out here this year. I'm not sure what this flower here is called, but uh, the bees really like it. I've seen uh, honeybees on it and bumblebees. And this is a perennial flower, I'm told. And uh, we should have quite a few back next year. They're not as thick as some of them out uh, the other flowers out here, but there are a few of them. There's one right there. And we've had a pretty good honey flow this spring. Probably the best that we've had in the six years I've been keeping. Beer. Here's a nice shot of some right here. And there's a whole bunch right here that are basically done blooming. They're kind of brown. But uh, you can see how many we had. We also have a lot of these little pink flowers. I'm not sure what they are, but they came up later. They probably didn't start until the middle of June. Okay, a real quick beehive update. These are hives 20 through 24. And uh, most of these are splits. The one on the right there is a swarm from last year. And it's coming in this year real strong. That bottom honey super right there is completely full. And they've drawn out. Uh, they were working on two frames on this empty one up at the top. I put my empties on top uh, just so I can see them easier. But you can see how strong that hive is. This hive here, number 23, was a strong single deep. And uh, I gave that hive to my grandson Hayden. It's over there at his house. So check out Settle Bees on YouTube. And uh, let's see, we got one super there. And... There's a few frames drawn on that one, but any of these hives that have two supers, the bottom is completely full, and the bottom super yields about 40 pounds of honey, I believe. So let's go over and uh, give you the quick rundown on 1 through 19. Okay, real quick. I know this isn't real interesting, but uh, these are the rest of my hives here. So anywhere you see two honey supers, the bottom one is full. So that's, I had one over there, so that's two, and three, four. So I've got four supers that I know that have nine frames drawn. And previous uh, video you saw Tiny Swarm 2. Well, Tiny Swarm 2 absconded. And when I came out here to give Tiny Swarm 2 some uh, liquid feed, they were gone. But what was funny was... I looked up and there was another little swarm in this tree right here hanging off of that limb well one of those limbs that one right there so I got that swarm and so now it's tiny swarm three is in there and I gave them some liquid feed uh, so I need to get in there and fill up their liquid and I also gave them a uh, brood frame give them a little bit of a boost and the queen in there looked like uh, that queen was not mated. So she needs to get out and mate and come back. So I need to check that hive and see if that queen is in there or not. So uh, all these other hives that have a single super on them, they are somewhat drawn out and have uh, honey in them. Some of them are about three-fourths full, some none at all. Hive number two was my strong honey producer last year, and they have not touched that super, which is strange. So... You can't predict year to year what any hive is going to do. And that's the same queen in there as well. So single honey super. This one here is about two thirds drawn out and filled. And they're all starting to cap these. So there's a, a single deep there. That's a single super that's part way full. This one right here. The queen got past the excluder somehow and started laying, so I went ahead and added that second one before the bottom was full, and then I moved the excluder up. 
Well, most of that brood hatched out and I went ahead and moved the excluder back under the, uh, the first uh, honey super there on the bottom, the white one. And uh, I moved the frames that had mostly honey in them down to the bottom. So that bottom was about, I don't know, probably 90% full and the top was probably half full. So anyway, that's it for this. Uh, I need to go into these single deeps and check them and be sure they're doing okay. Also, one of my subscribers left a comment that one of my hives over here, number 22, was honey bound. And you know, that's, he was absolutely right. So I'm gonna take a couple frames of honey out of that and move over to those single deeps and move some empty drawn comb over here and free up that brood chamber for that queen to lay over there. It was hive number 22, should be that one right there. So uh, thanks for leaving that comment. I've never had a problem with hives being honey bound. Here in central Oklahoma, it's usually dry and uh, we've had a really good honey flow this year. So they filled up most of these big deep brood chambers on the second one. Uh, some of them filled them up in like a couple of weeks or less than that even. Okay, so that concludes this video with a quick tour of what we got going on. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up if you would. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, get our subscribers up. We're still not monetized, but they said by the end of June they would be uh, caught up. So here it is June uh, 18th and I'm still not uh, proved to be monetized and everything else is taken care of so just waiting on them so uh, hope to see you soon and uh, we'll catch you on the next video take care mm -hmm.